Have you noticed that your boss is a visionary? That whenever he is in meetings or he or she is in meetings and they're always talking about the future of an industry and maybe you might find it very difficult to get them aware of the tactics or the projects or the ideas you want to have because they're thinking so far out. Or on the flip side, you want to be a member of that executive team in your company, but you need you realize that that requires you to become more visionary. So if you are having these any any of these situations, then in this video, what I want to share with you is how you can become more visionary. Now I get it. You might realize and you might be working with some co-workers that you might feel like, well, they're born like that. It seems like they're naturally visionary, but I'm naturally not visionary. And yes, I understand some people have a natural inclination towards thinking like a visionary or thinking in the future tense. However, becoming a visionary, the skills of visionary thinking can be trained. We're not all born with it, just like we're not all born great communicators. We're not all born natural leaders or natural, naturally able to see the future of an industry. But these are skill sets that can be trained, even if you feel that you don't, you're not born with that natural inclination. So that's good news. So in this video, I want to share with you three key pillars. You want to develop this leadership skills. You want to develop the visionary qualities. And these are three pillars that the moment you are able to develop these three key pillars, that you will develop your visionary qualities, the visionary traits that you see in your colleagues and your higher ups. So I'm going to go through these three pillars in turn in the video. And at the end of the video, you're going to have a blueprint on where to focus on, what to work on step by step to develop these three pillars so that you can become a visionary. So let's go for a walk and talk about this. So three pillars. When you develop these pillars in turn, that you will be able to notice yourself having visionary qualities that are observable. Pillar number one is insight. It's insight. What does insight mean? We hear this a lot, but I want to give you a clear distinction on what insight really means. Having insight, insight itself is a deep understanding that when you have that level of understanding, you can turn your learnings into new wisdom that can be applied across disciplines to create a clear outcome. That is insight. It is very different from knowledge. Insight does not equal knowledge. Hopefully, knowledge turns into insight, but not always. And here's why. Because we've been programmed at a very young age to learn, to read, to take courses, to take classes. We've been taught to read in any of those educational contexts, to read to memorize certain things, to memorize facts and figures and information, and therefore to regurgitate them on the exam or to regurgitate them when we need them the most. That's how we've been taught to learn. And as a result of these learning, these teachings on how to learn, we therefore develop this vernacular of when we read new things or to learn what we're reading, we tend to criticize it. We tend to criticize it as either right or wrong, either relevant or irrelevant and so on. And so when we progressively take on that capability of learning or that mindset of learning, that prevents us from, from developing deeper insights. Because here's the progression. We learn and that's what we're doing. We're accumulating knowledge. But knowledge does not mean insight. We have to, first of all, assimilate that knowledge into an understanding. And from a deep understanding, we can synthesize new wisdom. That is insight. So in order to do that, it requires a different way of learning, a different way of reading. When we read, instead of trying to read to memorize and therefore regurgitate or recall what we've learned, this is now learning to create new mental models, new understandings and cognitive understandings of the world around us in the area that we are reading and with the intention of creating insight. So if you're somebody who's listening to this and you recognize the importance of insight and you recognize this in your bosses, your higher ups as well, that they have deep insights in areas of expertise and their areas of knowledge as well. And you might notice that visionaries, those people who have visionary qualities, you're going to notice that when you spend time with them, that they very quickly develop insights in new areas as well not necessarily their key area of expertise, but they very quickly develop new insights. And that really is a particular modality of learning. So if you're somebody who wants to develop this skill, how do I develop deep understanding insights in new domains and in my current domain as well? If that's what you are committed to de developing for yourself in this year and next year, then I invite you to book a call with me and work with me. Every single week, I coach and I mentor a group of clients on how to develop insights, how to have that learning, how to have critical thinking, how to be able to articulate the insights as well in a way that your higher ups can understand. Right. So below this video, in the description below this video, the first link is a link to apply for 
be, become accepted into my coaching. And this just literally, when you apply, it's literally the first step is just to have a conversation with either myself or a member of our team, just to see if it's the right fit for you and if we can help you with what you're looking for. And so if you are the right fit, then you're gonna join this elite group of community from all walks of life, different industries as well, that where we are working on becoming visionaries, working on how do we develop these critical thinking and communicate the value that we have to bring. So only if you're serious about creating this outcome for you and your career path so that you can step up into higher levels of leadership. If that is you, then book a call and I look forward to working with you on the inside. Pillar number two, imagination, right? Pillar number one is insight. Pillar number two is imagination. What is imagination? We've been told as children to develop our imaginations. And as adults, we've been told that children have very vivid imaginations. So I want to give you a distinction around imagination as well. When it comes to imagination, it simply means to picture oneself. And that's exactly what it means. If you look at the Latin, the word imagination comes from a Latin word imaginari, which simply means to imagine oneself. And imagination is really the mind's, one of the mind's greatest superpowers is our ability to imagine. It is one of our mind's greatest superpowers. And if you look at the visionaries around you, it could be on your executive team or the higher ups that you're working with. If you look at these visionaries, you're gonna notice that they have an, an ability to picture things in their minds before the, it exists inside this world. If you look at everything around you, Right? I'm surrounded by houses, right? I'm sitting on a bench right now, right? I got in a car to get here. Everything that we have access to in our lives, everything that we own, all of these things that are in our physical world, our surroundings that we can touch, we can feel, we can see, all of these things existed in someone else's mind before it existed in your hands. Even the house that you live in on your block, that existed in the architect's mind before it existed on the street, in the street corner. So this is the mind's greatest superpower, imagination. And one of the biggest blockers to our imagination is that we've been so caught up in the doing. We've been so caught up being busy doing our tasks, checking up our to-do list, doing the, what we're told, doing what we think we're supposed to do, doing what we think we should do or ought to do or need to do and so on. We've been so caught up in that. And that's the, one of the biggest blockers of our imagination is that we feel that we need to do we need to perform, we need to do and do and do. So when it comes to developing this pillar, it's important to take a step back and ask yourself certain key questions. For example, what would happen if? What would happen if? What might be the outcome if? So being the first step of imagination is daring to ask the question, what if? Because imagination means, going back to what I shared earlier, it is picturing something in your mind, picturing oneself or picturing something in your mind before it exists in the real world. In order to do that, it is an if question, a question of if. The imagination allows us to explore a different future, explore a different direction, explore what is possible. Right? So that is the first step into becoming, into becoming imaginative because that really is the key for visionaries. The second pillar for visionaries is to have an imagination. And a lot of visionaries that you're going to work with have such vivid imaginations. And that's what allows them to create things that don't yet exist. To create product ideas, to create process ideas, to create whole new companies and whole new market ideas as well. And market offerings as a result of that and improved versions of the future as well. Right. So that is the second pillar is imagination. If what I'm saying resonates with you or you find it helpful, remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Ring that bell below this video as well so that you can be notified every time I release a new video every single week. And by the way, if you're day to day and you're on your phones and you want some source of inspiration or you want some quick tips as well, then follow me on Instagram at Dr. Grace Lee, where every week I release quick tips and advice and content there that's really in, in very colorful ways. So follow me on Instagram and I look forward to hearing your comments there as well. So what have we covered so far? Three pillars to develop so that you can develop your visionary capabilities. First pillar was insight. Second pillar was imagination. And the third pillar is intuition. Intuition. So what is our intuition? There's a lot of misinformation about, out there around what in, intuition is and what it is not. So let me give you a distinction. When it comes to intuition, it comes from the Latin word intuit, which means to perceive. So an intuition is to perceive through our senses so that we can get a bigger picture of what actually is 
and that is our intuition. So when it comes to intuition, intuition is not the same as your gut instinct, right? How many of you have said that before? Well, I feel it in my gut, right? I have this gut feeling. It is very different from intuition. Your gut instincts are literally, that's what it is. It's an instinct. It's an instinct that causes us to avoid pains it causes us to move towards something pleasing to us something pleasure to us that's an instinctual reaction which is very different from an intuition and intuition allows you to perceive things that are deeper as well and the great news about intuition is that it's not about needing to develop it or strengthen it and that's where the missing a lot of misinformation is out there your intuition is innate we all have an intuition every human has an intuition it's about honing our abilities, developing our abilities to understand it. So if you are somebody who is wanting to know, how do I do that? Then the next video coming up next, you don't have to go anywhere. Coming up right up next is a video that I, I recorded earlier to talk about how do you develop your intuition? How do you hone in to listen to it? And how do you know that this is my intuition versus my gut feeling or my gut instinct? So that video is coming right up next. I'll see you there.